The spotlight this year is pointed at the most universal of themes, love. The love theme. <laughs> it's good with love, of course. We need more love in, in, the, in the world. It gives a, a good spirit to the festival, yeah. I think it's a good concept. Love is often in the center of festival films, and this year more so than ever. Today we shall meet some of the people behind the love films. Anna Vilasek's film, E Love, tells the story of a woman in her late 40s who dives into internet dating and finds numerous passionate affairs. My film, E Love, it's uh, about a 50 years old woman who is dumped uh, by her husband, sadly, and she decides to, um, to, to get on the internet dating sites, um, even if she's a very, uh, very romantic woman who normally wouldn't be in this kind of uh, dating sites. This woman discovers her, herself and uh, she's becoming another woman in the film. Mais go ici, vous trouvez pas tout est très laid. Oui, tout est très laid. C'est fait exprès. After the screening of my movie, the the reactions were were quite good. In fact, uh, most of the people told me, "Oh, it's a good film. I liked it very much." I thought they were surprised by the film, and that's uh, a good thing. <laughs> Love theme is always good. And there are like, I mean, there are two major themes in fiction. It's death and it's love. During the festival, over a hundred directors, actors, producers, and other film workers come to Stockholm to present their films, give interviews, mingle, and walk the red carpet. I was once in the Stockholm, Stockholm Film Festival. It was six years ago with my previous feature film, uh, Riviera. And it was a very nice experience, that's why I decided to come back this time uh, to present my film again. I like the city, I like uh, the audience. Uh, uh, it's very warm and uh, for me it was a surprise because I thought uh, Swedish audience will be more reserved, will be more shy maybe. And uh, it wasn't that, so, <laughs> so it, was a, it was a nice screening last night for me. But what else do they do while they're in Stockholm? We decided to follow a few of the more prominent guests this year. Today, we're stalking Parker Croft, the 24-year-old actor who both wrote and plays the lead in the film, Falling Overnight. Hi there, are you okay? <laughs> yeah. Are you, are you Sarah's friend? Or no, I don't. The concept of the piece was developed around the role of Elliot, um, and so it, it was somewhat written for me. Um, so we created the project with, with me in mind as, as Elliot, um, and you know I think that was something that people were okay with, otherwise they probably wouldn't have worked on it. <laughs> Summer sailed in Filled my the most elemental part of the script, I'd say, uh, Conrad came to me with the idea. He, he wanted to work on a piece, a time-constrained piece, and focused on mortality and love, and those are some, some big ones that you know, are pretty appetizing to, a, to an actor and a writer. So uh, I had a writing partner at the time. Uh, his name's Aaron Golden, fantastic writer. Uh, and we knew we had to write it in a pretty fast clip, so uh, we brought Aaron on board and the three of us actually hashed it out together. Um, me, Conrad, and Aaron. It's you? Yep. Yeah, it's my art show, actually. It's chicks with backs. You check it out. Well, we shot the movie in Los Angeles, uh, and I'd say it took us... Um, Production days was actually 14 nights, but that's a little deceptive because we um, we did uh, about two weeks of rehearsals before that. So 
by the time we got to shooting, we were pretty ready to go. How about you tell me what's going on? Called Ali go down trouble and all You bring as much honesty as you can to the character and, and whatever sort of elements of your uh, you know, self that work, you, you incorporate, and what other elements don't work, you sort of augment. So I'd say it's, it's pretty well uh, meshed together. I mean, that, that character isn't, of course, me, so. But there's a little piece, I mean, there's little pieces of me that you'll, you'd be able to see in that for sure. Life is full of unexpected moments that can lead to infinite string of possibilities. And if you find something that interests you, chase it down because who knows where it could lead. Witt Stillman is someone you don't want to pick a fight with, especially if you're in the competition section this year. All of his feature films have been shown at the Stockholm Film Festival through the years, and this time he's chairman of the festival jury. Um, this is the fourth time I've come to Stockholm, and each time it's with a film for the festival. So I'm always here in November. And um, one of the attractions of being in the jury is um, we can stay in Stockholm longer. So we're invited for over a week. Well, if you just come with your film, you're only here for three days. And I love, um, I love cities that were great in former times um, and with much of the architecture built before 1900. And I think the water in Stockholm, the, the beautiful architecture, the scale of the city, and I like cities where you can walk, where you really can cover the city on foot, mostly. And um, it seems an eminently civilized and lovely city. I, I really like it here. Not only that, he's also directed the film Damsels in Distress, which is competing in the American Independence section. It's a whimsical yet intelligent comedy set on a college campus. Where I went to university, or when I went to university, it was very depressing. It was very grungy and political. And I went back to visit a few years later, and everyone was talking about this wonderful group of girls who decided to change the depressive atmosphere and cheer everyone up and have social life and fun and clean themselves and dress well. And um, I was really impressed with how happy everyone was about these girls. And so I wanted to use that as the basis for a story. I find that very attractive. Let me see, I guess I was sort of like the uh, Adam Brody character a bit. Um, who's, his name is uh, Fred in the film. And he's reading a lot of uh, sort of decadent 19th century British authors, which is what I would do. There's no logic to the algebra of love. The algebra of love? Mm -hmm. Sounds like the title of some William book. You can, you can bring a lot of things into the, the theme love, so I'm just curious to see what it's, what it's going to be. It's universal. It's, it can be... Uh... If there is only one subject remaining <laughs> for the films, it will be love, obviously. It's the love theme. Well, it's the best theme ever, of course. I could make a lot of film about uh, this subject, so it could never end. 